Iran is seeking to enhance the technology for manufacturing fighter jets, Hatami said on the sidelines of a visit to Aero India 2021 on Wednesday, adding, thanks to the efforts of air industry experts, we have developed indigenous products including Koser Light Jet Fighter, Yasin Training Jet Fighter, and various prototypes of helicopters and UAVs. He reiterated that all these achievements have been gained despite the imposition of illegal sanctions on the country by the U.S. In relevant remarks last September, head of Iran Aviation Industries Organization, IAIO, Lt. Brig. Gen. Afshan Kajafard announced that his colleagues are working on the manufacturing of eight types of homemade airplanes. We are producing eight models of airplanes and we are endeavoring to render sustainable services in this industry," General Kajafard said in Kish Island in the Persian Gulf on Tuesday, September 15. He added that the IAIO is active in building Airbus, MD and 337 types of planes, noting that production of drones, helicopters, and UAVs are among the future plans of the organization. Iran has made giant advancements in aerospace industries, especially in designing and manufacturing pilotless drones in the recent decade. Also in last August, General Kajafard stressed the country's desired position in the world in manufacturing different types of drones. The international bodies which assessed the country's air combat power have ranked Iran fifth world power in the field of drones or UAVs, he said. Iran is once again showcasing its capability to manufacture fighter jets domestically. However, these jets are heavily based on vintage U.S. airframes, and the Islamic Republic of Iran Air Force IRIA, fleet still consists of mostly antiquated aircraft. On June 25, Iran's Tasnim news agency reported that three new domestically built Hisa Koser jets were delivered to the military. In a ceremony marking the delivery, military officials once again hailed Iran's self-sufficiency in building military aircraft. While described by Tasnim as a fourth-generation all-indigenous interceptor jet the Koser appears to be a refurbished third-generation American-built F-5 fighter jet. Iran still possesses several of these jets that were purchased during the reign of the last Shah. The unveiling of the Koser in August 2018 was heavily scrutinized by analysts since the fighter's airframe is identical to that of the two-seater American F-5F, rather than a wholly original indigenous Iranian design. The Koser is heavily based on the F-5F airframe, although likely with new avionics and additional upgrades. It is also the latest in a long line of Iranian-built F-5 derivatives such as the preceding Hisa Azarij, first introduced in 1997, and Hisa Sikit, introduced in 2007. The IRIF's arsenal mostly consists of warplanes left over from the Shah's enormous military acquisitions in the 1970s. Tehran has, quite impressively, managed to keep many of the sophisticated F-14 Tomcats it bought then operational to the present day. By doing so, it disproved Western news reports in the 1970s that presumed Tehran could not keep these warplanes operational without continuous American maintenance and technical support. In 2007, the U.S. decided to completely shred its entire fleet of iconic Tomcats out of fear that spare parts could end up on the black market, where Iran could acquire them. Nevertheless, the IRIF remains a largely antiquated air force. And while Tehran repeatedly touts its ability to build what amounts to upgraded F-5s it still wants the option of purchasing much more modern fighter jets in the near future. In October, the United Nations embargo on Iran is scheduled to expire as agreed upon under the 2015 Iran nuclear deal. The Trump administration vehemently opposes this and is scrambling to have it extended indefinitely.
Iran's ambassador to the UN Majid Rabanchi insists that extending the embargo would be a very very big mistake and warned that if this happens, Iran will not be under constraint as to what course of action it should take. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is particularly adamant that the arms embargo must remain in place. On June 23, he tweeted that, if the embargo expires, Iran will be able to buy new fighter aircraft like Russia's Su-30 and China's J-10. With these highly lethal aircraft, Pompeo went on to claim, Europe and Asia could be in Iran's crosshairs. The US will never let this happen. Pompeo's tweet included a map showing the respective ranges of the J-10 and Su-30 SM albeit if, as journalist Seth J. Fransman pointed out, they were to take a one-way trip. While Iran might indeed consider purchasing new Russian or Chinese fighters for its aged air force, that's if the embargo expires, and if Tehran can even afford to make any significant procurements anytime soon, it wouldn't likely use its air force in such a way, if history serves as any indicator. The IRAF never operated its warplanes far outside Iran's frontiers aside from daring airstrikes deep into Iraq during the Iran-Iraq War. Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini refused a request to send some IRAF F-14s to help the Syrian Air Force against Israel early in his rule. Had he agreed, the outcome of the June 1982 air battles between Israel and Syria over Lebanon's Baqa Valley, when Israeli F-15s and F-16s shot down 88 Syrian MiGs while suffering zero losses, could have been a lot different had Iranian F-14s, armed with their deadly long-range AIM-54 Phoenix missiles, supported those Syrian MiGs. In 2015, it was reported that Iran was sending two fighter squadrons, likely Su-24 fencers, to Syria to support President Bashar al-Assad's regime. However, this never transpired. Also, the notion that Iran would attempt to use its warplanes for a long-range attack against its adversaries is unlikely given how relatively easily detectable they would be as well as the likelihood they would be intercepted and shot down before even reaching their targets.